for a mentor. You look for a coach, somebody who can teach you. You want to learn how to invest? Look for somebody who can teach you how to invest. In other words, you put yourself in the path of the blessing. That's the one reason why this person was blessed. Because they put themselves in the path of that blessing. Second lesson that we can learn from this. Expect God to exceed your expectation. Expect God to, to, to bless you abundantly. In fact, think about this for a moment, okay? This guy would only go to church every day. Why? Because he needed to be fed. He wanted food, plain and simple. He wanted a meal. He was there to beg for money. But what happened was instead of receiving money, Peter says, silver or gold I do not have, and yet what I do have I will give it to you. And then he says, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, get up and walk. He didn't receive money. You know what he received? He received a miracle. God doesn't just want to bless you with money. He wants to give you a miracle. He wants to change your life. Come on, go ahead. That's a good place to clap your hands. God wants to bless you abundantly. How many of you believe that? Just raise your hand. God wants to exceed every expectation that you have. And when God exceeds your expectation, get this. He's not just going to exceed it a little bit. He's going to stretch that. You'll know when God exceeds your expectation because you'll feel that you are richly blessed. Even if you don't have the best of everything, you know that God is blessing you. Why? Because you've got joy. You've got peace. You've got love. And I know I'm talking to two groups of people here. There are people here who are listening and saying, Brother Audi, you're talking about abundance and God exceeding my expectations, but it doesn't feel like, you know, that God is exceeding my expectation right now because there are two seasons in every person's life. The first group of people that I'm talking to are the people who are in their planting season. How many of you feel like you're in your planting season? The pandemic happened and right now you're continuously just, you know, raising yourself up in your planting. Maybe you just started a business. Maybe you just started a new career. You're in your planting season. And get this, when you're in your planting season, it feels like God is blessing other people more than you. You're putting in the work, but the produce is not happening yet. But I don't want you to feel bad. Because this is the place where God is just growing you. Sometimes we compare ourselves to other people. And we say, why, why is God's favor on them more than me? Why does God love them more than me? Hey, you are in the planting season. This is the place where you're learning. Some of us, you know, we come too often to God just like that man. We come to God begging for scraps. Begging for leftovers, thinking that, you know, I'm satisfied with what I have. And we're thinking that this is it. Pwede na to, Lord. If you're single, some of you might even be saying, Lord, kahit sino na lang. Kung sino mo po sa akin sa feast na yung umaga, sa nalang, Lord. We beg God for scraps. Thinking that, oh, that, that, that that's what we deserve. Or maybe that God is punishing us for something that we did wrong. Remember that story of the prodigal son? That son walked away, got his inheritance, walked away from the father's house, but what happened? He mismanaged the blessing. And then he said, after he wound up sleeping with pigs, eating pig slop, he said, I'm better off going back to my father's house. But he knew, he expected that when he would go back, things might not be the same. He had shame in his heart, and so while he was walking back, he probably did not run. Because he wasn't that excited to go back. He just wanted to enjoy having food in his stomach every day. But then what happened? The Bible says that when he saw the father, when the father saw him, the father was the one who ran. He was expecting that the father would just make him one of the servants. But instead the father threw a party for this guy. I'm telling you, when God will bless you, he will bless you abundantly. But sometimes we're just begging for scraps because we're happy. We're happy with just receiving this, Lord. Pwede na to, Lord. Not knowing that God is able to do immeasurably more than whatever you can ask or imagine. God can do more. Touch your neighbor and say, God can do more. God wants to bless you, but you're in your planting season. So it takes time. But then there's another group of people. People who are in their harvest season. How many of you believe that you're in your harvest season? Come on, let the people see you. Don't be shy. Don't be embarrassed. If you're in your harvest season, God bless you. It's because of God that God is blessing you. Amen. But I want to give you an advice. If you are enjoying the rich blessings and abundance of the Lord, here's one piece of advice, brothers and sisters. Don't ever let God's blessings get over your head. Because you might end up thinking, you know, I'm so blessed. 
They're not. Maybe it's because God favors me more than them. Maybe it's because God loves me more than them. Hey, God loves you equally, just like everybody else in this room. God sees everybody here equally. And so don't ever let the blessings of the Lord get into your head so that you become so entitled with that blessing. Because what happens is this, when you get so entitled with a blessing, the Bible says that God gives, but God can also remove it from you. So what do you do? You thank the Lord for it, but also this. I want you to know that one of the reasons why God blesses you abundantly is because He wants to make you, 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 an example of His generosity and His goodness. You are but a mirror that God is going to do. When people see you, they'll know God is blessing that person. So it's not about you, but it's about what God is doing through you. Those two reasons. But let's go back to the story. Because I want you to read with this with me. How did the people respond to seeing this lame beggar all of a sudden celebrating, jumping up and down? It says that Peter saw this opportunity and addressed the crowd. Because they were looking at Peter and John, thinking that the miracle came from Peter and John. And then Peter said this. What is so surprising about this? And why stare at us? <laughs> As though... We had made this man walk by our own power or godliness. Can I preach this a little bit to some of you? I got to get real with you. We happen to live in a world right now, and I'm not excusing myself as well. We live in a world where we like taking credit for things that we, 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 always, we, we would not, did not necessarily do. You agree with me? We like taking credit for the good stuff that happens. Like we like sometimes to... to you know, get the praise, we like to get the compliment, even if sometimes we're not the one who actually did it. Like, if you stretch it a little, a little even further, we like putting our names on titles, on positions, on billboards, on tarpaulins, saying, you know, this is from my project, this is mine, I constructed this, thinking that it's all about us, but what is Peter doing here? Peter is saying something so good here. He says, why stare at us as though we had been the one to make this man walk by our own power or godliness? But he says in verse 13, For it is the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of all our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant Jesus by doing this. What is Peter doing? Peter was saying, I didn't do it. John did not do it. This is the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob. And the God of Abraham responsible for all this. Peter is teaching us a lesson about humility. Let me share with you one last story and then we'll come and respond to the Lord. One of our servants from the feast asked my advice.